Welcome to Keep What You Earn, your judgment and jargon-free zone for entrepreneurs of all levels. Get ready to learn how to scale your business, save money in taxes, and create a business that grows your wealth. If it feels like the financial side of business is like eating your vegetables, well then think of this podcast as the ranch dressing to make the process a little more enjoyable. My name is Shannon Weinstein. I'm a CPA and business owner on a mission to simplify money and empower others through knowledge. I hope this episode inspires you to take action, but remember that the information we share is for educational purposes only and is not individual tax advice. Now that we got that out of the way, let's start the show. This one, we're going to talk all about the accountable plan which is used by S corporation owners to save money in taxes, aside from the self-employment taxes that you're going to experience saving on just by having the S corp. So what the heck is an accountable plan, Shannon? Why are we talking about it? Well, an accountable plan is a fancy term for an expense reimbursement policy for your business. This enables you to reimburse your employees, including yourself, for personal assets that your business uses. And why should you have one? If you don't always pay for business expenses with business accounts as an S corporation owner, or if you have mixed business and personal expenses, which are blended, the accountable plan enables you to reimburse yourself out of the business for the expenses that you incur personally on behalf of the business. So if you reimburse yourself without one, that reimbursement could be considered taxable income. Keep that in mind. It could be considered taxable income if you don't have an accountable plan in place. An accountable plan is simply a written policy, and we provide this to the folks who enroll with our S Corp service. We provide you all the tools to set up your accountable plan properly, but it's just a written policy that basically states that you can do this. And all you have to do is keep it in your corporate records. You don't have to file it anywhere. You don't have to declare from the mountaintop that you have an accountable plan now. You don't have to tell the IRS or anything. You just have to make sure that you have it documented in the case that it's ever requested. Very rare, only in the case of an audit, really. So what can you reimburse with an accountable plan? Here are some examples. We talked about if you mistakenly pay for business expenses personally, number one, that's always an easy one. But the other thing is mixed use stuff. So when I say mixed use, I mean personal assets typically that are also sometimes used for business. Here are some examples. Your home in the form of a home office, a vehicle, or maybe even your cell phone, right? Have you thought of your cell phone? But you haven't thought of that yet. If you're listening to this podcast on your cell phone and you're learning a lot about taxes, it's at least a portion. It's at least a portion used for business just by you listening to it. The reimbursed amount though that you that you pay out from your business must represent the business use portion of the expense. So you'll have to figure that out for each of these different expense types. You can use the portion of actual costs Or in the case of a vehicle, if you use the vehicle for less than 50% business, you would use the standard mileage rate pretty much for for the vehicle. The expense must have a valid business purpose and it must be supported by a receipt or other type of evidence to substantiate the cost. So that includes documentation of how you computed what you're going to reimburse. And we have, like I mentioned, we have an accountable plan tracker that you can use if you enroll with us that has a a whole list of ways to calculate this. So the home office is probably the most complicated. For example, the home office, you take the square footage of the space that qualifies for the home office deduction, divide that over the square footage of the the home overall, And you end up with, that's the business portion of the home that you get to claim. You then apply that portion to the actual costs associated with maintaining and owning your home. Now, this can be pretty pricey. For all of my New Yorkers out there, this is great because number one, you live in a tiny spot and your office takes up half your apartment. Number two, it's really expensive to live there. So those two things in common are, or in combination, are my favorite things for tax deductions. I joke, but but there's a lot you can take advantage of, especially if you have a small place or a large office or an expensive place to live in. There's more tax savings at your disposal for this. So we're talking about your mortgage interest. We're talking about your rent, your insurance your utilities, your internet, 
repairs and maintenance on the home, cleaning, et cetera. So you can take a business portion of those expenses and your business can actually directly reimburse you as the owner its share of using all of that, meaning its square footage share. So to reimburse, you simply cut a check or make a transfer from the business account to the personal for the amount needed. There has to be clear documentation though of the the quote unquote request for reimbursement. So if you've ever worked for a company, you probably remember this. You had to send in like your travel receipts, right? You had to actually send in a reimbursement request. Think of it like that, where if you're logging it into some type of tracker that you're essentially requesting to have the reimbursement done, showing the calculation and then paying out that amount with a lot of memos and notes in your QuickBooks or in your bookkeeping platform, showing what that relates to. So make sure that you've just got that documented the whole way so that there isn't some random PayPal transaction for $1,200 that you forget about later and you go, oh yeah, I don't know what that is. You want to make sure it's really clearly documented. So again, just simply make the transfer, cut a check. It's really easy. And also when it comes to bookkeeping, don't be afraid to use normal expense titles. You don't have to create an entire account in your QuickBooks or in your bookkeeping platform for accountable plan reimbursements. You can just call it what it is. Like if it's a portion of your internet, call it internet expense. If it's a portion of utilities, call it utilities. If it's a portion of home office, call it home office, et cetera, et cetera, right? If it's a portion of your vehicle, call it vehicle. It's pretty easy. But you can just label it in a memo as accountable plan reimbursement for these costs so that we know exactly where to bucket it for tax purposes, okay? You might be thinking, okay, instead of reimbursing for the expenses, can I actually just do an advance? So could I pay myself as an employee? Could I, could I give myself money to go spend? And you've seen this before when employees go out on a business trip on behalf of the business, right? You send someone to a conference on behalf of the company. It's not that uncommon to give them an advance to go spend, like give them a cash advance to go. This is really common with sales departments too, to give them money to, to spend that they have on hand. So cash on hand. That is not forbidden. That is okay. But what you have to make sure of is that any unused portion is returned along with the personal expenses that were spent need to be returned. So again, it has to equate to at the end of the day that you only spent money on the business use items and that is what was truly reimbursed. So that is really the most important thing. And you might be wondering, okay, Shan, okay, home office, vehicle, I take those deductions already on my tax return, why do I need the accountable plan if I already get the deductions from you know, my, my regular tax return? So as an S-corp owner, the accountable plan is the preferred way to do this. Let me explain why. Because instead of claiming a home office deduction on your tax return or a vehicle deduction, and by the way, the home office and vehicle deductions, the IRS knows that people don't get this right. They know that you might be eh, you might be rounding up <laughs> your business miles or maybe your especially those ones with 000 right did you drive 8000 exact miles this year right the home office whether it's principally used excuse me the principal place of business and, and exclusively used for business they know that people stretch these criteria and they stretch these deductions so what do they do they made this part of again i call it audit bait it's, it's audit bait sometimes to have a home office deduction. If you are legit entitled to it, by all means, take the home office deduction. I am not discouraging you from taking the home office deduction. However, if you can take, if you can get the benefit of the du- deduction without any of the risk of the audit, that's the accountable plan. And I sh- and it's not without risk of an audit. It just significantly decreases the risk of the audit. So There's a couple of benefits to doing it through the accountable plan. One is that now, instead of it being on your tax return and declaring, I am taking the home office deduction, instead, you are burying this into the profit and loss statement. So you are actually putting this in as, for example, rent expense, office expense, et cetera. And if that's the case, then the IRS doesn't necessarily know that you're taking the home office deduction. It just sees that you paid a rent expense or you paid an office expense, which is totally normal. This is just normal behavior. You're not calling any attention to it. The other reason why it's really beneficial is cash flow. So if you need to pull money out of your business 
and, and maybe the salary we talked about in last episode, maybe your salary isn't cutting it in terms of lifestyle support. Well, what if your business reimbursed you a thousand, two thousand dollars in other expenses that you're incurring, like your cell phone or your vehicle, your home? What if it was reimbursing you that every month as well as tax free income? Ah, so now you're transferring money over without having to trigger any taxable event. And by the way, this is not a taxable event. This is not taxable income. And you might be thinking, but I'm making money, like I'm, I'm pulling money out of the business and, and I'm better off because of it. What's actually happening here is the business is reimbursing you for its share. Think of this, if you're married, <laughs> I'm gonna pull a you, me, and Dupree reference. <laughs> it's the third wheel in your house, okay? It's the, it's the person in the in-law apartment and your business is using your space. Your business is using your stuff. And what you're trying to do is show the IRS, business is using my stuff. So I am suffering. I am, a, I am as a business owner suffering because my business is using my stuff, you know, a third of the time, or it's using 10% of my house that I can't enjoy because my business is using it. So in a, sen a sense, they're actually taking this as making you whole. So instead of you suffering, you're now made whole or made neutral. So you're not actually making income. You're just being made whole for what you have spent or what you have suffered as a result of your business using your stuff. So remember that it is not taxable. It's not income. And this can boost your cash flow significantly if you are paying yourself every month. And, and let's get into that. So can you just reimburse all your expenses at the end of the year? Can you just add all this crap up and write a big check and call it tax-free income? Wouldn't that be great? No, not quite. So even though you're entitled to these reimbursements, there is a rule around this. Uh, you must have the reimbursement be within a reasonable period of time from when the expense was incurred. So generally the rule is about 60 days. That's kind of the rule of thumb. You want to though get in the habit of reviewing your reimbursements monthly. Here's why. And this is just my rule. This is not regulatory. This is not required. I encourage monthly because... Number one, it's just easy to do on a routine basis. If you did it every other month, I feel like you'd forget, oh, did I do it last month or do I do it this month? And it's just enough time in between to forget to do it. So I think monthly is good to get into a routine. I also think that, you know, most of your expenses come due monthly. So your mortgage bill is monthly, your rent is due monthly. Why not have your reimbursement also replenish that cash flow at the same frequency? That's my opinion. So I think it's a good habit to get into monthly. And also then if you skip a month, you're still in compliance. Like you can still catch up. You're not going to miss your opportunity according to the policy. So I encourage you to do a monthly reimbursement under your accountable plan. And because of, of the frequency of your expenses, it does make sense. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, cool. I can reimburse certain expenses. I can figure out how much, cool. Now, how do I actually implement this? How do I set this up? Like, do I magically have an accountable plan just by having a document? Yeah, it actually is that easy. It's really easy to set up an accountable plan. Now, it's a piece of paper. It doesn't just say in crayon, I have an accountable plan now. Thank you, Shannon, in your business name. It does not say that. It's, it's a very specific type of legal document or, or policy that has to say certain things in it. Again, we have our template, which you can use if you enroll with our S Corp service. So we have the accountable plan template. It's a one page sheet, really easy. And you just keep that in your documents. There's no need to file. There's no need to report. You just have to make sure that you have that on file to give you the right to use it. And then you can reimburse based on your calculations. Now, as always, documentation is key. I always remind you of that documentation is key. So make sure that you've got all your ducks in a row with supporting and substantiating all of the expenses that you're incurring and that you're reimbursing. It's so important. Now, you don't really need to worry about coming up with your own templates and stuff. There are, there are things online you can use, full disclosure. We just have a proven template that works and a tracker that, that is really comprehensive and clear. So we just like to use that within our business and we can share that with you if, if you subscribe with us. So if you're interested in having this set up for your business, whether it be just the accountable plan, which we can do, or the whole bundle, which is to set up an S corporation. We talked about this. All we have to do is file the S corporation election for you. Easy. 
We also get you set up with Gusto Payroll and we get you set up with an accountable plan that you can use. So really it's about on average, our clients experience this over two or three phone calls that we go through to get everything set up properly for you. So it's really a minimal time investment. It's probably, I'd say two to three hours of your time because we take care of most of it for you. So if you're interested in participating in this service, if you're interested in learning more about the S Corp and if it makes sense for you and doing a consult, do get in touch with us. Text me the word S Corp at 860-609-6374. Link is in the show notes. Text me as well. And let's get started saving you thousands in taxes. I would love to know what you learned. So share with me on social media, tag me on Instagram, and let me know what you think. See you next time. Okay, real talk. Our business can really mess with our emotions and our mindset. Am I right? One day we feel like we're unstoppable, like we could run through a wall, and then the next we want to burn it all down and start from scratch. Hey, I'm with you. A lot of this has to do with how we approach our money. And if you need a quick jolt of mindset habits for the next five days to help you reboot and recalibrate, check out my five-day financial mindset refresh delivered straight to your email. Click the link in the show notes to sign up right now. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a rating and review on your podcast platform. This small action goes a long way for podcasters to get our message heard by more business owners just like you. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to information about our guests and ways to get in touch with me. We'll see you on the next episode.